everybody, and welcome back to Rogers Television TV. I'm your host of Meet the Band. My name is the BMD, and you are here to catch a break with me, the BMD. And right over to my beside left is one of my favorite people. I've interviewed him numerous times. He's a, certainly a local legend hero in Toronto and the GTA, and we are so glad to have him on the show. Say hello to Mega Sean, my friend. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic, sir. How are you doing? Good, good, good. It's been a while during COVID on the catch-up, but we needed to get the catch-up, and I'm so glad you're on the show. And we are looking forward, all the listeners and the viewers, to see what do you say, what do you know today. So let's get right at it. Welcome, everybody, to the show Meet the Band. I'm the BMD. Our guest today is Mega Sean. Certainly, uh, Mega Sean, I also call you Big Daddy. You know that. And uh, we're going to figure out where these names come. But before we get into the names, where did you come from? What is your background? What is your rooted culture? Tell the viewers and the listeners who you are. All right. It all started in a place called Stony Gut, Jamaica, where my father was born. St. Anne's, Jamaica, where my mother was born. They moved to Canada. That's where I was born. Okay. So I'm a Jamaican descent and proud Canadian. Okay, so now let's spin right into the names. I've heard Bubba. I've heard Big Daddy, which was for me. And I've heard Mega Sean. Please tell us where you cut the mustard on that one. All right. It started in grade school. We were playing Police Academy. That's where Bubba came from. Okay. Because I was Hightower when we played Police Academy. So Bubba, it stuck. Even my parents called me Bubba. Okay. Then it transformed into Bubba Sean because my real name is Sean. As time went on, I felt like I was developing a little bit of a superhero um aura around me and people started calling me doomsday Whoa. like i took the s off of superman's chest so it went from bubba sean to doomsday and then i believe i elevated and transformed into mega sean wow because i'm i'm larger than life now mega wow. sean you know my attraction to you back uh we've talked uh, two or three times on the different radio gigs my attraction to you was the great chemistry, the great people person you are. And I'm not pumping up your tires or blowing smoke up. We can't say it, but you know where that other word is. But tell us about the juice. Where did the juicy come from? Is that from your parents or you just evolved from the street? It's a little bit from the streets. I used to, I was in a group called Cryogenics back in the day. We were street legends because we sold our CDs on the streets up and down Queen Street and Young Street, sold over 100,000 CDs from like 2004 to 2006. So Cryogenics, we were on the street. Because CDs went out of style, I started selling T-shirts in front of the Sky Dome. I love BJ's T-shirts and stuff like that. And I have a documentary out called Rise of the T-Shirt King. Not sure well, if you can see that. We There's got a it. documentary got on YouTube and stuff. And I I sold a lot of shirts. In fact, this is in the documentary. Um, there I ran into a lot of conflict. It's about um, just surviving without just a regular nine to five. I have a little knack for street hustle, but I don't like to break the law at all. I don't sell drugs. I don't do anything like that. So I decided to develop and design my own T-shirts that were a little bit edgy. And sell them on the streets. I have a vendor's permit. Everything was completely legit. So in some of the bio reading up and catching up with you, there's this term as the T-shirt king. Now, you just yeah. segued, you led into my next question, but I'm going to double back a bit. How did the king of the street T-shirts, king of the T-shirts, how did the king come up? Well, um, the rena I was selling T-shirts for a while, but when the Raptors won the championship, a lot of people wanted to start to sell shirts, but they could not because they didn't have their paperwork ready. They they didn't understand the the move all the moving parts of the streets. I was already out there, so I knew you can't make a shirt that's copyright infringement. 
So I made sure I made a shirt that said we cook curry in the six because we were playing Golden State and Curry played on them. And I was the only one out there selling shirts on the streets when the Raptors were winning a championship. I, after I've been selling shirts for years and that came, people started saying, well, it was a bunch of us out there. We were called the 416 T-shirt Kings. But oh. because I was the last one standing, it just, the streets, it wasn't a name I gave myself. It was the streets there. Oh, you're, then you're the T-shirt King. There's nobody else out here. And that's how it became that way. So I'm here in the street hustle. I'm here in working for a living because rap is not paying enough for the bills, uh, paying the bills forward. Moving forward, where did the music come in? How did you know you were good enough? How did you know you were a rhymatic man or you could put the verses together or you mix the beat? You became Mega Sean. The legend in Toronto, not just from selling shirts, but certainly opening concerts and playing in front of large crowds. How did you get the decision on, okay, I'm going down this music road, take the time, run it back, tell us when it started, how old? Well, I, I believe it started because my father, he, he used to uh, play a lot of reggae music and I, the, the base of it, I kind of became attached to the the bass and the rhythms and the melodies and the harmonies of the, all the Bob Marley records and stuff that he would play. And he used to uh, he used to own a club back in the day, and it was music was just there in the forefront of my parents' life. So it became natural to me to fall in love with music. Where I I started rapping just in grade nine because just for fun everybody was freestyling rapping that's just something that we did where i found out that we could do something i, I attempted to i formed a group called north side sound actually behind me if you could see the clear vinyl yeah underneath the gold record as my first record i ever pressed that's north side sound it was called Northern Enlightenment. Actually, it's funny enough, I have the cassette tape too. This is the first cassette that I ever pressed. I pressed it with a credit card from the bank. So when we pressed that and it was getting played on the radio, it gave a spark that, oh, this can happen. When I thought that I was really good enough when we were selling CDs later on down the road as cryogenics, because Northside Sound had broken up because we didn't really understand the business part of music. We were just talented rappers, but we didn't know that there was business behind music. So as we're selling CDs as a new group, Cryogenics, I got a McDonald's commercial. And then after that McDonald's commercial, a radio McDonald's commercial, after that, I also got a milk commercial, which turned out to be one of the biggest milk commercials in Canadian history and hip hop, which the dairy milk farmers, there's two white farmers rapping in the video, but it's my voice and my friend, Dwayne, who goes as reason, it's our voices. The farmers are lip syncing in the commercial. So how, after that, how did it? Oh, so well, hold on. After that, they, they put the commercial in front of the Passion of Christ in the movie theaters and real money started to come in. I actually could live off of my music from selling CDs on the streets and the commercials I was getting. And uh, much, from that came a much music TV show. And I was actually living for a while off of my talents. So that's when I said, you know what, this this can happen. So when when did you know you had that success early? I'm feeling. When did you know you were good enough? Other than the obvious commercial venues, the CD sales. When did you know in your heart that Mega Sean was an entity that people liked and loved? And how did you know you were good, good enough? Um. When people started to recite my lyrics and they would have their own interpretation of it. And I didn't look at my lyrics like that. They would tell me a different definition of what they thought I meant. That's when I really was like, wow, I, I think I'm better than I think. Also, um, it, it just, 
it, it the mu- I've stopped making music a few times because the money what isn't consistent, but I realized recently in the last during COVID actually um, that I wasn't really making music to make money before now. I was making music because I loved it. And I'm never going to stop making music. Don't get me wrong. Because I love to make music. But now I'm trying, I'm realizing I never really put the efforts in to monetize it. So now, as Mega Sean, M for the music, M for the movement, M for Mega Sean, M is for the money. So now I I, I'm like, I need to take this like a business because it is the music business and anybody that doesn't think that always ends up hurting themselves and i'd hurt myself early i'm just lucky that i'm still here and uh, i i can correct it before it's done so good answer well said my friend how how did you know and why rap and hip-hop why not rock and roll why not country music or pop (laughs) whatever well Hip hop is what I, I started. That's what I fell in love. What made me fall in love with music was reggae first, and then hip hop. Hip hop had something that nobody else understood except my friends and I. When we were teenagers, it was a thing of they're speaking a language that my parents don't understand. The teachers don't understand. It's only us that understood it when we started listening to it. So well, that's what made us fall in love with it because it felt like it was for us. It was for the the youth that did not were not understood, and there was a lot of code in hip hop that people nowadays are starting to understand the code, but there was a lot of code in it that only us as young teenagers were understanding. So I fell in love with hip hop. Since then, the '90s, I believe hip hop music has the music industry has weaponized it against young black kids. It's been weaponized and turned into a seem like a joke, and it's it 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 the lot of popular hip hop music is not that talented, which opened the door for people that are not talented to get involved. And now it's more of it's more than just music; it's more of a business, hip hop music. So my new group that I formed with my wife, called M. M for the movement, M for the music. This is our logo. We have a clothing line. This this is not a hip hop group that we formed. It is more like pop with a bit of rap to it. And it is more positive because I believe that this generation is almost getting lost because of the music is so negative and meaningless. So I am decided to make a difference with my wife and my partner, Jay Vision. We decided to take our music and make, make a, a difference with it. Now, we've been starting to do a rollout with my wife and I solo albums, uh, The Rise of M. This is uh, the cover of my album, The Rise yeah. of M, part two. And her album was The Rise of M, part one. It's a rollout for our album, M for the Movement, M for the Music. We did put out a Christmas album. That's what that gold record is up there. It was a Christmas album. It had featured Run DMC on it and uh, Tory Lane's sister, Destiny. And from there, we're just not going to stop because we feel we have a message and a movement that is the world is desperate to hear. We're making different music. It's musical. It's not repetitive. It's not looped samples. It's real musicians that we hired to play music. And it's a real great body of work. M for the movement, M for the music. You know, yeah, you know, sometimes feelings can't be expressed. But I'm going to pray to God and try my best. 
There's something in the air, I miss you more and more They said this pain would go away, an everlasting sore A deep internal pain, it's driving me insane You and I, we had the deepest bond, now you gone away Questions never asked, and words that were unsaid I think about you late at night, crying in my bed A wolf that's counting sheep, this pain hit very deep I see you in my dreams, steady walking on the beach I should've listened more, this hurts down to the core I watched them Zip your body bag right there on the floor That image can't erase yeah. It's written on my face uh -huh. If you haven't lost your mother I don't think you can relate yeah. My mama I miss you since you went away Or Miss Maisie B uh -huh. There is no way to describe how much you meant to me You helped Royal Stony cut with no electricity yeah. Daughter of Papali, uh -huh. sister of Dorothy yeah. The Saint Anne's angel, yeah. the real Iron Chef uh -huh. The way you baked them cakes, people knew you were the best uh -huh. You looked up for your brothers, yeah. your nephews and your nieces yeah. And since you left, I could say the family's in pieces uh -huh. You stood for what was right, yeah. even if it hurt you yeah. And people on the street called you the mirror you fed a whole village yeah. with some ackee and some flour yeah. Until we meet again in heaven, I can count the hours yeah. Hey mama I missed you since you went away And I think about you every day Did you make it home, make it home, make it home To stay, did you make it home, make it home, make it home How about, are you a good critic for yourself? Yes. I think so, I'm too So you can sit down. Let me set the tables, sir. You can right. sit down. You lay a track down. You think it's okay. Somebody else, maybe your wife or your partner tells you, you know what, Big Daddy, that isn't got it happening. We aren't feeling you. Are you able to take it in? Run yes. it back well, my, and redo my partner, it? My partner, G Vision, is very critical. So I can't come with any kind, anything half. If, if, it, if it's not perfect, he sends me back to the drawing board. It's as simple as that. Sometimes it's frustrating. But mm. after a few months, I listen to the old one and listen to what, and what he made me redo. And nine times out of 10, he's right. I, well, it was too, the lyrics weren't strong enough or it was on a vibe that was too one way. We're trying to, what, this album that we made, this fit completed, I believe it's perfect. It's the only thing that I think I've created as a 10 out of 10. Some of the songs after we made them I actually brought tears to my eyes because I didn't believe I could make music that's this good. So the new album that we're coming out with is, I believe is groundbreaking. It's different and it's musical. You know, you're an emotional guy with a big heart and I know you have lots of things you stick your hand in charity wise and helping out the world what keeps you going like you keep a lot of people going what keeps big daddy going hmm. music music keeps me going here's the whole thing uh well, my first year of marriage um i my wife because my music at the time was not making any money so my wife says can we give this a break i was like sure because it made sense I started selling shirts. T-shirts was making money. And I started making commercials for the T-shirts I was making. And I was depressed my first year of marriage, but I was happily married. I still couldn't understand. I couldn't grasp it. I didn't understand. It's because I wasn't making music. Once I started making music again, my ha that inner hole that was in my body, it was fulfilled. So... I believe now I'm married to music because I, I realize it's a part of me now. I, so that's what keeps me going. I hear you. Listen, I'm going to give you the name and the title of a new song, but I want to be on the credits and the royalty. How about this one on the next album? Big Daddy is the real Go Go Gadget. 
<laughs> Do you like that I'm one? Off guard. Go go gadget arm. Do you like that one? <laughs> yeah, to see it, it, it might it might fly. All right, depending well, on how it writes. Don't forget on you're, on, writes. you're on you're on tape today, so don't forget <laughs> it. It's recorded. Listen, I've asked Listen. you before. We ask every interview has to be because all the young bloods up there trying to be the new big daddy Bubba Mega Sean. How tell them how tough the music industry is. The music industry is the hardest industry next to the film industry. These are the two hardest industries on the planet. Not to mention, is it so hard? Now it's well, 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 well oversaturated. So it's hard. You have to keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. But it is extremely hard. If you if you don't have tough skin, people are going to critique your stuff and they're going to say mean and harsh things. Like my wife had a song and it and it had over 4 million views on World Star Hip Hop. Wow. But the comments she couldn't some of the comments she didn't like. And that was the first time she had to she realized she had to get tough skin. Because I'm like you can't take people's comments and just take offense to it. This everybody has an opinion. They're like, you know, your butthole, you know, everybody's got one. Yeah. Listen, three words has to be clean. This is a clean G-rated show. Three words that describe you. Not three a story, words. not a story, three words. Positive energy hip hop. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Three words we just talked. Uh, five word association. This is a little fun for you and I. I'm going to ask you one word. You're going to tell me what you feel about it. Okay. So, five word association quickly. Favorite restaurant. My favorite restaurant. Gotta oh. be quick. Ah! Aristotle's. Okay. Number two. Your favorite clothes. My favorite clothes. M Clothing for the movement line, gear. Clothes. M for the movement gear. The website. M for the movement ca. Go buy something. Go buy a hat, shoes, sweaters, t-shirts, knapsack. Oh. We got it all. The, my favorite gear is M for the Movement, my clothing brand. Okay. Number three, favorite car. My favorite car is uh, Mercedes Jeep. Mercedes Jeep. Okay. Number four, favorite ice cream. My favorite ice cream is a vegan vanilla, simply vanilla, coconut milk ice cream wow and number <laughs> five the final one your favorite drink my favorite drink is orange juice no lemonade lemonade, lemonade. was a popular drink and it still is <laughs> okay for the youngsters out there the young bloods we call them the newbies the newcomers the millennials what, what would your tip of the day be don't stop don't let nobody tell you you can't. Can't is an illusion, like freedom. <laughs> you expand, can do anything. expand on it. It's, uh, you can do anything you, your thoughts can manifest. Anything you think about, you can manifest it into real life. You know, if somebody, the word can't should not be even in the dictionary. Because anything is possible. I believe that. Very good. Very good. Now, listen, how can people connect with you? Say it slow. How can people connect with you? Get a hold of you. Want to talk to Big Daddy Bubba Mega Sean. How can we reach out to you? Okay. On TikTok, it would be M, the number four, the movement on TikTok. Okay. On Instagram, it would be Mega Sean Music. 
Mega M E G A Sean S E A N music, all one word. Mega Sean music. That's Instagram. On Facebook, just Mega Sean. Two separate words. Mega Sean on Facebook. That's how you would get a hold of me. Go check out my videos on YouTube or go to the website www. M for the movement.ca. So how have you enjoyed yourself hooking up with the BMD again over this COVID break we've had? Well, COVID really, uh, like the, the, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a lesson because that's the whole reason why we made the documentary because of COVID we were sitting in our house and we're like, wow, all the plans that we had to release stuff came to a halt because it was the, we are, our, our Marketing game plans were the world being free and open. So we are stuck. So my partner, Jay Vision, and I started to make a documentary about my life called The Rise of the T-Shirt King. You know what I mean? And because of COVID, it made us have to get more creative, figure out obstacles, because it's like, I don't lie down. I find a way over the wall. Once the obstacle is there, I look around it. So COVID kind of is a blessing and a curse because... I guess the whole world was in its comfort zone and now everybody has to get out. Mm -hmm. Get out of your comfort zone and figure it out. You just can't accept defeat in life. It's there's there's only two things guaranteed is change and death. So is there always gonna be a hustle with Maga Sean? There's a well no. Because I'm turning the hustle into a business. Okay. M for the movement and M for the music. Well, listen, we're almost out of time, sir. I want to thank you for taking the time uh, on our second episode of Catch a Break with me, the BMD, on Meet the Band on Rogers Cable TV Network, Channel 10 in most areas. You'll have to check your local listings for more channels in different areas. Mega Sean, my friend, I consider you my friend. Thanks for taking the time with us. And you know what we say, if you're happy, tell a friend. See you next time. All right. <laughs>